welcome to Common Bond Green. We're excited to have everybody here. And our intent today is just to make sure that people are aware that we have a green committee. We've had a green committee for the last couple of years. Um, oh, sorry. Thank you. We've had a green committee for a couple of years. And we've had lots of discussion out at sites early on about what kind of green things we're doing. And we just wanted to loop back and restart the conversation. So, like I said, we've had a green committee since 2015, <laughs> and we've started talking about green and sustainability for years before that. I know um, the last couple of uh, strategic planning processes that I went through, we kept talking about green and should we set that 20% reduction goal that a lot of other organizations were setting, and we just weren't there. We didn't have a tracking system to even measure our baseline. Um, but it kept coming up, and we kept getting um, invitations from people to participate in pilots and different programs that they had for green and sustainability. And we just kind of grabbed onto what we could, but we didn't have any um, any group or any any way to make informed decisions about what we would and wouldn't participate in. So, and we at the same time we said yes to NeighborWorks when we joined, and we had to become a NeighborWorks Green certified member by. We are now in 2017, so we had a goal to meet that in three years. So in 2015, we started this Green Task Force. And so as you can see here, these are the members, Jolene, Jess, Diana, Tammy, Jesse, Chris Maida, Maggie, Pat Stockhouse, and myself. So that, and um, is Deidre on there? No. Deidre was um, one of the initial members too. She came for the first several meetings to help get us started and to really help us establish what it is that we're doing. So the Green Task Force is really the group that um, initially collected all the information. If you remember, we sent surveys and stuff out to sites to get information, collected that information, using that to help us determine what our green actions and what our green goals would be. Can we move ahead? So from that, we, um, you know, again, that. We are already doing green, but we want to make sure that we really just made a statement and recognize that Common Bond is doing this because we do value being a good neighbor and environmental stewards. That's our job. That's our responsibility. Um, so we crafted this green mission statement that you'll see here. And this mission statement was um, created with the task force, the leadership forum. We had some other feedback as well to really make sure that we understood what it is that we want to be doing. Um, green and sustainable across our organization. So really we're focusing on the areas of energy efficiency, water cons conservation, healthy environments and recycling and waste reduction. So we're pretty heavy into when at our sites a lot of recycling and waste reduction. Um, healthy environments, you'll hear a little bit more about that, that we've just started to really um, think about that and start talking about that and working on a little pilot. Water conservation, we had started several years ago. We did lots of um, uh, retrofits out at properties, and it's something that we're starting to look at again. So, but energy efficiency is something that we're really working on now, and, and Pat will tell you a little bit more about that. But we're part of the BBC, which um, we have committed the, the Better Buildings Challenge with um, the Department of Energy and HUD. And so we've committed that we will reduce our energy consumption by 20% in 10 years. So by 20, 25. So we signed on last year. All right. I have a cold. I not anymore, but I'm recovering. So I'm sorry. I'll talk as loud as I can. So the Green Task Force, the thesis said, we're just kind of the, the group that knows what's all going on green or as much as we can know about what's going on at Common Bond. And that was a lot of questions about what we're doing. So there's a document created, and it's all on Common Bond Connections, and Maggie will show you where those, these are at the end. But this is a summary document that just kind of describes, we have our green task force, that's kind of the leadership group of our green. Here's what we're responsible for. And then there's a work group, a sustainability um, projects work group, which is Pat, myself, Lisa, Chris, um, Tammy, and Bob. It kind of works with our partners that we're doing. So you might have heard from WeGoWise, which is our utility tracking company. So we're the ones working directly with WeGoWise to work on our energy goals. So we work with a couple partners to do some of the projects that we have going on. 
and the projects are listed here. So we're doing utility tracking. We're part of the Healthy Building Network Home Free Partnership when we have some stuff we're doing there about green cleaning supplies and also build our building standards and our building materials that we use at sites. Like Lisa said, we're part of the Better Building Challenge. We're part of SAFE. If you, I hope people have heard we're part of SAFE, and that means we also have an energy reduction and water reduction as part of being a SAFE member. And then we're also doing some work with the U of M, and this is Center, Center for Sustainability Research as a collaborative there. So this document is available just to kind of say what are we doing and what are the goals we're working on. Um, this is a broad overview, and then next Chris is going to talk about some more specific goals that we have within the organization. This is a broader picture. Next slide. Yep. Um, green Task Force outlined um, short-term and long-term goals for, for Common Bond to look at uh, for our green goals. <clears throat> we broke these up into short-term goals of three to five years, and then long-term goals, which is five, or five to ten years. And then looking at those in four different impact areas, so the corporate impact area would be uh, organizational-wide, so overarching uh, policies and um, practices that we can do to be more green. Uh, the development side, the development impact area is new development, new housing development. Uh, resident engagement, which is a, a really big uh, piece of, of energy and water uh, reduction, um, and also a hard part, with something that will take a lot of work to, to implement. Uh, and then also the existing portfolio um, is all of our properties, our approximately 100 properties that we have right now and the, the practices that we can do um, that will uh, get us to our, our green goals. So that includes doing utility use tracking using MegaWise, which is a, a software system that uh, we implemented within the last year to track how much um, energy we're using compared to similar buildings in that, in that area. Um, and then we can also look for um, opportunities to make capital improvements that would reduce energy or water consumption. Um, and then, as I said, can't see it all here, but we also are looking at long-term goals, five to ten years, and those are the bigger um, objectives, like reducing our overall utility usage by 20 percent in the next ten years. Um, and, and with those, we have all the, um, the goals in the four impact areas. <clears throat> Ready for the next one? Yep. I didn't put this document up here. We have Common Bond Green Development Standards, and this is a document that talks about building construction and um, acquisition development, about what we use in green standards. It's a new document it's just coming up, and we're just working with the real estate department about incorporating those and how we incorporate those. But it lists everything that's required from us, from uh, funders and from the state, for each of our three states that we're, um, we have housing in. But also it brings up the questions about knowing that we're reaching towards our 20% energy reduction goal. You know, that means we have to make some decisions about do we put more expensive and more energy efficient windows in a development, knowing that that will be more money up front, but that could cost, that, that will save us money in the future. So how and when do we make those decisions and what, that, what does that look like as an organization? So that's part of what we're doing. So if anybody has an interest about what we do in our development and what our standards are for green, there's a document that's available that summarizes that, that shows you everything that we do in terms of that. Thank you. I wanted to touch on some of the things, and actually I'm touching on what was mentioned before, the inventory. We sent out an inventory and a questionnaire um, to all the sites just because we wanted to kind of gather the information or what are you doing in the way of sustainability and in the way of you know recycling and green and things like that. So wanted to share some of the information and then talk about some of the initiatives that we have currently going on. So 96 um, properties basically participated in this survey. Um, and then I'm just going to list basically the, the initiatives and how many numbers are participating. Just part of this is the awareness and also knowing what's out there and what other people are doing. So out of the 96, again, and starting with this, we talked about sites having scanning capability to reduce trips to corporate or mailing. 96 out of the 96 are participating in that, and they have the ability to do that. Remote call-in technology, we have 96 properties that are participating in doing that. Green spaces for residents, patios, flower beds, gardens, rain gardens, 
we had 91 sites participating in that. Promoting all-in-one single sort recycling, 82. Smoke-free at sites, 78. Recycle bins at sites, 78. On-site recycling for residents, 71. Have recycling paper trash bins, 69. Reusing paper in the computer labs, one-sided copies, 69. Uh, recycle toner cartridge, 65. Provided recycling bins in auditorium and community spaces, 57. Community gardens, 53. Low flow attachments for sinks, 53. Energy saving appliances installed, 51. Recycling notices posted throughout the building, 50. Motion sensor lighting, 44. Recycling dumpsters at property, 25. This gives you an idea of basically what, what people are doing and as actually good information as far as we were surprised at the amount that, that, we, that we got back. Um, but it's also good information sharing to find out what others are doing and how they did it. Um, I can tell you part of the other resources that are available through our group, through facilities, through construction, through our partnerships, we have a lot of resources that are available. So right now we are currently in a couple of programs with our utility partners, one of which is the Multifamily Energy Efficiency Program. And basically this is a program if we qualify, and it's based on a number of things we're qualifying by, you know, the income and the number and counts and things. Um, with this program, if we're selected, you get a free energy audit of your site. If, you're, if your site qualifies, you get an implementation of any lighting upgrades, if the lighting upgrades are in order. And then you also, if you're able to sustain some, some energy savings out of those savings, you would qualify for some pretty nice rebating on major mechanical. That is through our partners at Excel and CenterPoint. Excel also offers other programs basically that are out there for specific things, like appliances. If appliances are 15 years or old, they have a program that can either rebate or replace those. Um, so if there is a want or a need, or if you just have a question on what else is out there, contact myself with facilities and we can get you connected basically um, with our partners. We're kind of picking away at them and some of the initiatives that we're doing. We currently just completed eight sites where we did LED lighting upgrades on all the kind of exterior areas. Great savings, you know, a three year return on investment basically for what we're doing. But these are the kind of things that we're looking at doing right now. Our next thing is we're going to look at what we can do about water flow. Um, you know, and figuring out how we can address that, that will have a great return on investment on anything that we do with that as well. But aside from our energy partners, the other things that we can be thinking about is our vendors. So through our major maintenance, operating repair, HD supplier Ferguson, they all also, they all also offer programs in the way of sustainability where you can get a free audit and then they would provide basically the materials and do the follow up on the audit. So. I guess the you know the bottom line is let us know, and we are also looking at all of our sites to see through the WegoWise benchmarking where's the best opportunities given the energy and what's being used as far as going after the best sites that qualify for these type of things. So look it up and let us know. Jesse is supposed to be next, but we can maybe read ready. Sure. Okay. Um, so Jesse, so we just want to do an overview of everything kind of the documents and resources available and the work the group has been doing, but Jesse's going to do a more conversation with you. We didn't want to just talk at you the whole time. And then we'll have some time for questions and Maggie's going to show everybody where the documents are when you're done. But sure. So um, we just wanted to have you have a little issue. Um, so, planning is actually up here. Um, so just really wanted to get you guys starting to brainstorm. Um, what what do you know have been resident education or resident engagement and leadership things that have gone on at site or could go on at site to support our goals in this area? So um, get together um, with a few people next to you and kind of chat for a few minutes about um, ideas you have about how we might do resident engagement, or I'm sorry, resident education, so more um, uh, more sharing information with residents, teaching um, or sharing knowledge that's potentially new, and then leadership opportunities for residents. So how can we get help support residents getting engaged in owning things like recycling, etc. So I want you to just uh, have those conversations, put them on these post-it notes, and go put them up on the board when you're done.
who can share an idea of an example of something that could would come to the green activity at Who has an idea? What something that's a green activity at site? Oh, there's um working with the kids um, to teach them recycling. Yeah. Okay. Having recycling on site is a green activity. <laughs> In the auditorium, at least. We have yeah. recycling in the auditorium. Yeah. The auditorium, at least okay. outside. Right. At least outside the building, it's looking at the parking lot. Yep. Other ideas of things that would be green. Are, are there are there receptacles at the buildings for recycling? At a lot of buildings, there are. Yeah. Not necessarily every single building. What did um, you say, Pat? 80? DWS, actually, yeah. I think it was 86 out of the 96 that participated. You can get, though, I mean, through our, through our recycling agent, are a waste hauling agent, we can provide recycling dumpsters as well as bins on site. So I think it's a difference between what is available at the site and what is being used, used. and marked yeah. on signs at the site. That's yeah. the difference. And I think also, you know, it's the difference between having a recycling bin down in the garage somewhere that they right. have to haul their bag down to right. versus making it more convenient or in the community room having a blue right. recycle bin and a garbage bin so yeah. that people have the opportunity to do the right thing. Yeah. Absolutely. So what's your other example? Is that uh, use of public transportation or group transportation for antibiotics? Trash pickup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. One that I've done at sites before is um, talking to tenants about using less laundry soap. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nicer, kinder, and gentler on our machines and helps yeah. them last longer and helps their clothes last longer. And yeah. they're trying to sell you laundry soap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Reminding people to turn and make a request for dripping faucets or mm -hmm. oh, yes. Reusing that paper that's used in the computer lab to print. Uh, something that was an error, take it back in the printer, or putting on the other side. Not using disposable stuff in the staff kitchens or mm -hmm. with resident activities as much as possible. Like using uh, cups and stuff that's not throwaway glass for residents and staff. Continue talking amongst yourself now, but I just felt like it would help maybe um, to kind of broaden our definition a little bit of green. Um, you know, a lot, I think there's some things that might feel small that we're doing that still are contributing overall. Um, so um, maybe continue talking for five or so minutes and uh, go put your post-it notes up on the um, flip chart paper. Uh, thanks for your brainstorming. I'm gonna, we're gonna just share a couple things that we see up here as examples. Um, and we're also gonna uh, save these and add them to kind of the list of inventory if they're not already there. Um, so resident education, green memos on Red Cafe. <laughs> yeah. On green paper or? Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, provide, yeah. <laughs> provide the recycling tools. Mm. Use lunch boxes instead of bags. Uh, develop a recycling game, I think mm -hmm. is what it says. Um, use the newsletters to share um, different things, is it statistics or information about kind of um, I think green no, or statistics are like, hey, look what we did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. I'm always like looking at at home. Uh huh. That my recycling, I recycle more than what I toss. Yeah. I know this. Last month we got that. this many pounds of recycling they picked up. Get the residents yeah. involved. Um, uh, connect organics recycling to sites. Cool. Um, and particularly, I know Minneapolis is doing the organics recycling. What do we got over there? A few, few examples. Just two. What's that? <laughs> he said, more here, less there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one says, create an offer up app, just come and buy it. Is that like if you're not using something, somebody else might be able yeah. to oh. use it? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Trinity. Um, let me down. That's just coming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, recycling bin monitor. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> What's happening in your site at your site's department? Closing blinds to better control the room temperature. We do that a lot here. Moving to all 
electronic electronic something grant document. Oh, mm. electronic filing. Yeah. 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 Rain barrels. Do we have rain barrels? Printing? Not here. No. Broadway, West Broadway has, oh, has them. Any other sites that are here covering barrels? Discouraging barrels. <laughs> <laughs> so discouraging, printed, or discouraging printing for agendas and other items. President Association President puts minutes and agenda on second side of paper. Good. No printing. Reusable plastic bags for recycling. Compliance is working to limit Printing to only portions of packets that they need to review closer. That's great. Um, information up to residents on what is recyclable. That's a big thing. Again, rain barrels. Compliance, shredding, and recycling only print what's needed. Um, presentation by partners. Cultural boundaries. Remote for recycling. Mm -hmm. Is anyone coming up with anything and go to meeting? I realize we kind of forgot to invite the ideas to come through. Um, so some of you who work on site might ask the question, like, so are we supposed to start doing this going forward? And we'll talk about that a little bit more in other meetings. I mean, this is just kind of something that we know is going on already. Um, and so encouraging it to continue going on. And we will have a way to, for site activities, eventually a very simple way to just like click a box if, it, um, if the program has some kind of component involving green. Um, We'll, make, we'll try and make it really easy. There's not like a expectation that we do so many green activities at sites, but um, just you know, keep doing them, keep talking about them as you're able, um, and um, we'll, we'll figure out a way to track it because we'll have some opportunity to report back to NeighborWorks on some of the cool things we're doing. And just to know that um, part of this is just getting to know the Green Task Force. We have an email address, so if you are asking questions or do we have a resource or do you know if anybody else is doing this? You can ask one of us or send an email and then we'll try and connect you um, with what we know, so what we can help with. And if you have a great idea that you're doing, get on Common Bond Exchange and share it too so everybody else can see it. What a great segue. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as promised, here's where you can find all the good stuff. We have a task force committee page that's under the committee's link on connections. Um, there you'll find, you can look at the goals list, the inventory, find more information about Better build, Buildings Challenge, all that stuff. Anything you could ever want is on that page, as well as our email address. To get and this PowerPoint will be up there. And this PowerPoint. Um, if you have something awesome going on at your site or in your department that you've seen, please let us know. Um, stories, submitting a story through the homepage is a great way to do that. And it'll, you can email us or you can submit through stories that will get to us. Um, the employee exchange, as Lisa mentioned, another great way to collaborate with colleagues um, and find out you know, what's working, what's not working, if you need advice about starting a garden, whatever it is, um, that's a great resource you can use. And then don't forget that you can give people keys for going above and beyond and green things, and then if they use their keys to get tote bag or water bottle, <laughs> you have double save. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Oops. Oh, we still to do it. Yeah. So, um, who's excited about green, or who's passionate about green in your own personal life? Mm -hmm. I, I think that it, we would be hard pressed to say individually we're not. We don't all feel some sort of responsibility to this. And we really, at for the Common Bond Green Task Force, are looking for some new members who have some really are passionate about this, have some great ideas of what's going on at their sites. Office. If this is your personal personal passion, we really invite you to join. Um, I think that for me, I've been trickling into green and sustainability for the last probably 15 years of my life, really paying a little bit more attention to it as I get older and as I realize my kids have to live in this world much longer than I do. Um, and just by joining the task force and being able to have resources more at my fingertips, able to read through it, it really has been a personal benefit to me that I'm able to take into my personal life as well. So um, I encourage you to, to join if you want to. And you can either go to our website and send us a little note that you're interested, or you can email any of us um, and let us know that you're interested. Or if you want to talk about it more, any of us would be happy to, to chat with you about it. 
So the last thing we want to do before we ask any questions is to give you, I grabbed some totes to give away. And like Lisa said, we're always thinking of greed. So I was like, how am I going to do a giveaway? Because I'm not going to do little sheets of paper, right? Because that's, <laughs> that's not going to work. So we had everyone write their name down. And so what we did is then I went to Google number generator. And then you just type in numbers, and it generates numbers for you, right? So we already did that. And we'll do a separate drawing for the people who are on on a webinar. So the three winners here for the green bags, um, Google picked number three, Terry Canis, number four, Andy McCabe, and number 25, Andy Hughes. Oh. <laughs> 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 Does anybody have any questions that they want to ask us? That was the time. You can ask us afterwards, like you said, but any questions anybody has for any of us? Yeah, I have to, uh, as you know, I talked about um, the Green Task Force. Is there anything in particular that I should be focusing on, or was there documents that I can have to kind of flesh that out a little bit? Wait, I worked with Michelle to put the info together for NEO. So but thank you for doing that and for talking about that. But I think if you want to point them to the, the committee page, because there is a lot of documents on there, just a lot of information. I think people, the reason we didn't put the inventory sheet up is because literally it's the biggest Excel spreadsheet that I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and just going through and seeing what everyone has set at their site is actually pretty amazing. So you might just want to point out to people what's on there and show our, you know, our mission statement and stuff and, and know what so people know. That's part of why we did this lunch and learn. We were just working so hard behind the scenes trying to figure out what does we mean at Comic Con, what's the task force going to do. But we really want to be more visible and have more engagement with staff now because we think we're at that point. So we're ready to do that. So any other questions? Any questions online too? Sorry. No, no questions. Anything? Thank you for the good one. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.